Well, we're going to look now at the Sherman M4A4, which is actually, in this case, a Sherman Firefly, just to give you another view of what the Shermans look like. Now, the first thing you need to know about the Firefly is the, at least, at least the M4A4 version, is that the hull is longer than it was on the M4A1. Therefore, you'll find a bigger gap between the different bogies. Notice how they're spaced out. And the reason for that is that they put a huge Chrysler multi-bank engine in the back of this tank, which made it longer. Now, the Chrysler multi-bank is actually worth looking at in its own right. It consists of six-cylinder Chrysler car engines, five of them, all clustered round a central crankcase. So you've got a 30-plug engine. It sounds dreadful, but it works very well. Apparently, the engine was so reliable that the British rather liked the M4A4 and took most of them as far as uh, use was concerned. So from that point of view, it's, it's a very interesting tank. Another thing to look at is the nature of the suspension itself. Being a developed version of the Sherman, it's now got the return roller on a separate bracket at the back of each suspension unit and a sort of spring arrangement on the top to hold the track up when it's going over each suspension unit. So that's a characteristic of all the mid-production Shermans. Only the early ones had that funny arrangement of the return roller on top of the thing. Now, the M4A4, as I say, was the standard version of the Sherman used by the British. It's got a welded hull, as you can see, quite distinct from the cast hull of the M4A1, and they found that at the front, the welding tended to be the one vulnerable point where the actual plates are joined together. That's the weak spot. And it meant that if the tank was hit, it tended to be hit and on a weld and that didn't do it any good. But the real characteristic of the Firefly is the gun. The original 75 millimeter has been taken out and it's been replaced by a 17 pounder anti-tank gun. It was quite a difficult business. They said that it wouldn't fit, but they managed to shoehorn the gun in. In fact, it's put in lying on its side. So Oda, who's got the difficult business of handling big rounds of ammunition, only has to turn rather than lift the ammunition up and force it in the back. So that's one characteristic of the Firefly, is this huge gun. They still had three men in the turret, although it was a difficult turret to move around in. And the loader, who would be on the left of the gun, was provided with his own hatch because they found that otherwise the loader could only get out by going under the gun, which in an emergency wasn't really possible. So the commander and the gunner are sitting on the right of the gun, on this side of the turret, in other words, which is typical American practice. The British had always put the crews, the, the turret crews, the opposite way round. That's how they did this. Other characteristics of the Firefly are the fact that the, the crew member they did away with was the hull machine gunner who sat down here. And you'll see that his machine gun position has been blanked off. And the gun itself, or the area where the gun stuck out, they've put a welded patch over to protect it. And that's another characteristic of the Firefly because they decided they'd need the space here for ammunition. They took 15 rounds of ammunition and to give you some idea of how awkward it was, you couldn't just pass the ammunition back to the gunner in the turret. You actually had to lift it out through the hatch above the um, machine gunner's head here, if he was in there, and then pass it in down through the top of the turret. So you only did it out of action to restow the ammunition. You just used the ready-use ammunition in the first place when the tank was firing. The other characteristic of the Firefly is that they found that the recoil of the gun, which they had to modify quite a bit to get it to fit, still went all the way to the back of the turret. So what they did was cut a hole in the back of the turret and weld a metal box on, which you can sometimes see, and that box contains the radio. So the loader, who's also the radio operator in a British tank, has access to it through the back of the turret, through the hole which they've cut. Funnily enough, the hole itself cut in the back of the turret is rather crudely done. And it always looks rather rough and ready, but uh, 
You're not supposed to see that, it's all going on inside. But that box on the back of the turret is where the 19 set would go, or in theory a 508 set if it was an American um, used tank. But that's the Firefly, it's a very um, effective tank. They found actually that this tank with the longer gun could actually take on tigers and panthers and knock them out. Mind you, it didn't have that very thick armour that you'd like as well. It had to get the first shot in and destroy the enemy tank before the enemy tank fired at it, just to make it a bit more exciting for them. But that gun, and the, something the Germans noticed at once, was the tank with the longer gun, and you can see how the gun sticks out ahead of the tank. They didn't really like um, having the gun stick out in front of the tank. The theory was that every time you went over a hill or something like that, you ran the chance of sticking the gun into the ground, which not everyone liked. So up until this time, most guns had been within the front of the hull of the tank, quite short, but the Fireflight stuck out at the front rather obviously. Now the Germans noticed this, and it meant that they made the Firefly their first victim if they were attacking a column of tanks because these were the tanks that were a danger to them. These were the tanks that could take out virtually anything the Germans had in their armoury if it got the first shot in. So the trick was to put it out of action first if you could. And they were rationed for two reasons. One is that um, the tank, although it fired a high explosive round, fired it at such a range as to be useless so that they like to mix the fireflies with ordinary Shermans because the 75 millimeter gun in an ordinary Sherman fires a high explosive round, which was actually very useful. So they tried to do that. So the Germans, of course, realized that the tank with the longer gun was the danger. And we tended to camouflage the front end of the barrel to disguise it, at least at a glance. If you look closely, you could see it was there, but it gave them a bit of an edge. Um, the gun is still coaxially mounted with a machine gun. They managed to get it in. So the actual turret is very cramped inside. It's got three men in it, as I say, but there's not a lot of room to move. The gun takes up an inordinate amount of space within the turret, and that doesn't really help. But the Firefly was the outstanding tank of the Second World War as far as Britain and probably the United States up to a point was concerned, because it could take out the heavier German tanks, which none of our other tanks could. So from that point of view, it's well worth studying and it's quite distinctive.